wonderful to know that God has a promise for you today. One word from God today can totally change your life. And I believe with all my heart, God has given me a word for you. And it's in Psalms 46, 1 and 2. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, don't be afraid. You're watching this program and you're feeling overwhelmed with fear. And God just spoke to you and said, wait a minute. I am your refuge and strength, not you. I am. And you are not to be afraid. I'm going to take you through. I'm going to make you victorious. Is that encouraging? That's Psalm 46, 1 and 2. So I encourage you today, if you're in a place of fear and worry, because worry really comes out of fear, I want you to call us, let us pray with you and say, hey, that promise was for me today because that promise can totally turn you around. Just one word from the Lord. Let me share something that happened. This happened about 10 years ago. The Lord gave me a word one day on the program and just stopped the program and said, there's someone watching me. You're in the drug scene. You're inundated with drugs. It was a woman. I said, put your hands on your head right now because God is going to set you free in Jesus name. And this woman did it. She responded. Here I meet her 10 years later. She said, from that time on, I never had drugs. I was totally set free from receiving what God said to me. And today she's a very successful businesswoman. One word, just one word can be transformational. Today, I'm going to be looking at fear and worry, how they work together, and how God has a provision for you. Actually, I have 12 promises that I believe will help you no end with the fear you are dealing with. Maybe you're dealing with fear about your health, your finances, your mate, your children, your relationships, your circumstances, and a lot of fear, you know, is vain imagination, a lot. But for us, <laughs> it is very, very real and very terrible to us. So I want you just to listen. I want you to receive the promises of God. I want you to receive an anointing that just comes out of this screen and touches you, transforms you, turns you around. Now, let me say this about fear. There is good fear as well as bad fear. So let's identify them. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. To fear God is to depart from evil. The fear of God is the fountain of life. So having fear in God is very important. And I want to identify that fear because I think sometimes we say, well, that's respecting God. Yes, a lot of people respect God, but they don't fear him in the sense they don't obey him. The fear of God is to depart from evil. So let me give you some examples. Let's look at David. He said, he wrote in Psalms, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And all of us, we need the beginning of wisdom. We need it daily and we need to be adding to it. And it's to depart from evil. So if you fear God, you fear the consequences of what sin can do. So you have a healthy fear. I don't just respect God, but I know if God said, don't do these things, they can really hurt me and really be damaging to me. Solomon wrote in Proverbs, and all of you, you just love Proverbs. I know you do. He said, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So the father said it, the son said it, but the father did it. When he departed from God, got involved with Bathsheba, had her husband murdered. When he was identified with his sin, the prophet came and whoo, really pounced on him. If you remember, he said, I am guilty. I am so sorry. He wrote Psalm 51. He deeply repented and departed from evil. And God absolutely transformed his situation and circumstance. He said, you know, David, 
He's a man after my own heart. But Solomon, who wrote the same thing, did not depart from evil. And he married all these women who were idolatresses that God told him not to and said he could make peace without him trying to marry somebody of another country to keep peace. And how sad at the end of his life, he did not receive the blessings that he could have had. And so we think of Solomon and think, hmm. Now he said the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, but he didn't depart from evil. He didn't stay in it. So I want to identify that there is a good fear. If you fear God today, that's the beginning of wisdom for you. But remember the beginning of wisdom is more than just respecting, it's obeying and departing from evil and knowing if we get in evil, we can repent, but don't go back into it and make another big mess. Are you okay? You say, well, I really need prayer for this. That's why we have a prayer line. That's why we have a website because I'm telling you, we want the good fear, but we don't want the bad fear that we say, oh, well, I'm afraid of people. It says the fear of man brings a snare. Oh, I'm afraid of what people will think if I testify that I'm a Christian. I'm afraid of what people will think if I turn down alcohol. I'm afraid of what people will think if I'm not sleeping around. Folks, that brings a snare that trips you up. That's what Solomon did. I don't want you to be tripped up. I want you to have such victory in your life. I want you to receive something from these 12 promises of fearing God that'll just sustain you today. You say, this is one of the best times of my life. I needed this. I needed this desperately because I'm into such an arena of worry. And remember, worry is absolutely negative thinking, absolutely not identifying that God can bring you through no matter what. And no matter how much of a mess you are, God can turn it around and make you victorious. Now, I told you, I'm going to give you 12. So man, I got to speed along here. So let me give you the first one because I started and opened the program with seven. So listen to number one. Here he says, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Second Timothy 1, 7. Now it says, God doesn't give you a spirit of fear. So where is that fear coming from? Oh, you say, well, it's coming from Satan, coming from vain imaginations, coming from listening to people, coming from looking at circumstances. But what has God given you? Power. Oh, and that's miracle working power. That's dunamis. Love that I can love no matter how ugly the situation is, is a gift from him. And that I don't have a mind that just goes berserk and I don't fall apart and get into anxiety. Woo! I'm not there because that's what God said and I believe what he said. And there is more to come. You cannot miss the rest of this. One of the most exciting opportunities you've ever had is coming up May 11th through the 20th, 2013. You say, what is it? We're going to China and you need to go with us. We will be ministering in three large cities, ministering Guangzhou, Shanghai, and Suzhou. Am I excited? Uh, Mom, it's going to be a really powerful trip. Not only do we get to minister in those three uh, cities, we also get to minister to leaders. Plus, we get to take a beautiful, beautiful river cruise, which I, that's where I fell in love with China in many ways. So this is going to be a powerful trip. You don't want to miss it. Get on the website right now or call the number on your screen to get your free brochure. But I'm telling you, this trip will change your life. It'll change you the way you see the world and it'll change how you see yourself. So get on the website now, get your free brochure, call right now. We want you to come with us. This is a chance of a lifetime and you'll never, ever be the same. Fear, ooh, bad fear is an ugly enemy. And what is it that you're afraid of today? Because I want you to get free. I mean, this program is to get you free, not just to tell you good things. And this promise, it's so wonderful. And it is in Deuteronomy 117. And it's number two, you shall not be afraid of the faces of man for the judgment is God's. Maybe you're in a situation, a circumstance, you are so afraid. You've had your husband or your wife say, I'm going to leave you. You've had your boss say, you're not going to have a job. You've had somebody say, you're going into bankruptcy. 
your children have said, I'm going to go live with somebody or I'm, I'm in drugs and all these fears, ooh, they just come on you and inundate you. And God gives you a promise here. And I want you to call in. I want you to identify the fear. There's something about identifying it, putting it in a capsule and taking the promise that goes with the problem and getting free. So that just takes you moments. Pick up the phone. Don't just sit there and be miserable and say, well, I'm glad to know this. Pick up the phone. And I'm telling you, we're going to pray with you. This is your day of victory over the fear of man, which is bringing a snare. Judgment comes from God. God is bigger than any man, any woman, and whatever they have said to you. Did you hear me? Are you listening? Are you tuned in? And are you responding? Okay, here we go to the third one. Aren't these good? They just get better and better. It says, fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of a good courage. Oh my goodness, this is in Joshua 10, 25. And I'm telling you, Moses tells him this over and over and over. And even the people say to him, now he faced hard circumstances. If he looked at his circumstances, he's got to go take the promised land. Woo. And, you know, how's he going to do it with all those enemies, all those tribes? Yeah, God made the promise, but how is he going to make it? And God said, fear not. Don't be afraid, Joshua. You can do it. And I want to say to you today, fear not. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And there will be times when you, your fear will be the mountain. But remember, the word moves the mountain. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, it shall happen. The mountain will move. And what? Dear Lord, what is on the other side of that mountain waiting for you? Have you called? This is your opportunity. You say, I got a mountain out there. Whoo, I got a fear. It's really big. It's really strong. Call us. Hey, hey, call us. We're not going to counsel you, but we're going to pray the promise with you. And God is going to bring the provision. And this is your freedom day. You're going to walk in freedom. Here we go. We're going to go to the fourth one. Are you cooking out there? I will not trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength. Oh my goodness. And my song, Isaiah 12 too. And you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So he's saying, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm making a decision. God is my strength. I may feel so weak. I may feel like I've done it all wrong. Oh, I have such horrible fear, but he is my strength and I will sing what he sings. And in that singing, I will say what he says. Oh my goodness, is that wonderful? And so this is a special promise for those of you who are feeling physically weak, maybe mentally weak. You just say, oh, I just don't have the energy to go on. You know, I just can't handle it anymore. And mentally, my mind is just weak. I'm just overwhelmed. Hey, don't you sit there with that attitude. Don't you sit there with that crisis and that problem. You pick up that phone and you call us right now. And remember, we, we do not counsel, but we know how to pray. And we have a website. And we take those things very seriously before God. And we take the Word of God. He is your strong strength. I just feel strength coming into some of you as I'm even speaking this. He is your song. I hear some of you singing the songs of freedom and liberty. Woo, 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 woo. I'm excited. I got to get to five here. It says, O man greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto you. Be strong. Yea, be strong. And this is in Daniel 10, 19. Now I notice God says these to people who are in big crisis big problems, as big as yours, if not bigger. Do you realize Daniel is a slave? Do you realize for years as a young man, he was taken into captivity? Do you realize his body was changed to be made a eunuch? Do you realize he became a counselor to three different kings? Do you realize the favor on this man? And yet his circumstances were terrible. How could he handle that? How could he have these circumstances and not the circumstances overcome him? Because he took what God said, fear not. So you've got circumstances, there are mountains out there. Woo, they're overwhelming. But folks, I don't know if you've been made a eunuch. I don't know if you're a slave. I don't know if you've left 
been taken from all of your family and the temple was burned and his life is a life of prayer along with three other friends. Wow. And he literally changed three nations. If he had walked in fear and don't think he didn't have plenty of it, then it would never have happened. You see, folks, you can make things happen when you get fear free. And how do you get fear free? You replace fear with what God says with faith. So you say, well, what do you want me to do, Marilyn? You know, what do you want me to do? I want you to call. I don't want you to just sit there and think, oh dear, I'm so sad. I'm such a victim. I want you to know you are a victor through the word of God. And I don't believe your circumstances are bigger than Daniel's. What are your circumstances? Pick up the phone and call. Tell us, identify that circumstance and say, this is what I'm facing. Maybe you have three or four, so keep it fast, keep it brief. We don't counsel, but let's get prayer for those. Let's see God move. Daniel came out smelling like a rose. God wants you to come out smelling like a rose. He didn't love Daniel more than he loves you. Hey, hey, there is more to come, more promises, more provisions to major problems. in angels? I do. The Bible teaches about angels. We're not to pray to them, but when we speak God's word, angels move at the command of God's word. Listen to this. Those of you who are in the fear and worry and anxiety today, this is number six on my list. Psalms 91, 11. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you how? In all your ways. Not just one of them, not just two of them. Even though I don't see angels, I believe angels surround me and keep me in my ways. And I don't know how many times I've been in overseas countries. My life has been threatened and I know that angels protected me. I've come home and thought, how did I get out of that mess? I mean, some of these brutal Islamic countries, angels, he gives his angels charge over you. What do you need angels to be in charge of today? Do you need them over your finances, a miracle in your finances? Do you need angels to take care of your children? Ooh, when my son was into drugs, I really asked God to send angels to protect him as he slept in parks and could have been killed. Call us today, identify that, that you say, I need these angels to work for me and we're gonna take the promises of God. We don't pray to angels, we pray promises. We activate angels. Don't you love that scripture? Oh, I think that is so wonderful. He gives his angels charge over you. We may not see them, but honey, they're in charge. That's what the Bible says. And I gave you number seven. God is our refuge, strength, present time and help of trouble. You don't, we don't need to be afraid. I gave you that right at the beginning, but let's go to eight. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 12, five. You know, sometimes when you feel like you've blown it, You've just done things wrong, been stupid, and sometimes even being unaware. I, some things I've done knowingly, but some things I look back and think, dear Lord, where was my brain? Did I just turn it off? But he said, I won't leave you nor forsake you. When you don't do it right, he doesn't jump out of the boat and say, well, you did it wrong. No, 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 no. He is there. He doesn't leave you. He doesn't forsake you. I think this is one of the most special promises to those of you who are afraid today and in worry. I think it's one of the most special. So please call us because to us, 
you're the most special people. Your need is most special to us. We're not going to counsel you, but identify. And you don't have to tell all the stupid things you did. We don't have time for that anyway. But you can just say, you know, I misbehaved in this. I made wrong decisions in this. I was real ignorant in this. Uh, where was my brain? And say, but I don't believe he's going to leave me nor forsake me. He's going to stick with me. And all you have to do is read the Bible. Look at Abraham, the great man of faith. And I wonder, how did he stay in faith? And it's interesting to me that God told him to count the stars and count the sand, the sands of the sea. I think what Abraham did at night, he looked at the stars instead of looking at the problems. I don't have a baby. Sarah doesn't get pregnant. I think in the daytime, he looked at the sand. So he kept his eyes on the word. Hey, Keep your eyes on He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Look at the next one. This is number nine. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do to me. Because this is where most worry and fear come from, is what can people do to me? You know, I have a friend I'm praying. Her daughter mm, has gotten into some trouble with drugs, you know, and is in jail. Very serious situation. And so what can happen to her in jail? Would you want your daughter in a jail or a prison? Oh. But, you know, we took this promise and we stood on this promise. Oh, the Lord is my helper. I'm not going to fear men or what's going to go on in that prison. I'm going to trust God. And today she is released. Dear Lord, it is such a miracle. But what did we do? We took the promise for the time of the need of the fear of man or what man could do. Ooh. Now, listen to number 10. Fear not, therefore, you have more value than many sparrows. And that's Matthew 10, 31. I think sometimes because we don't do it all right, we get criticism, we criticize ourselves, we reap some things ugh, from wrong decisions, you know, and then we think, oh God, have you given up on me? And this is a special promise to people who think God has given up. Fear not, you have more value than many sparrows. You are so very valuable to me. When you're right, when you're wrong, you're still valuable to me. I love you, right or wrong. And if you're feeling so unloved today, just so, mm, such a failure today, dear Lord, you need prayer. Call us right away, get on our website right away and get, get, Prayer, folks, prayer and praying the promise changes the problem. Now, here we go to 11. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you, Isaiah 26, 3. He says he can keep you in peace if you'll trust him. Don't trust what you haven't done. Don't trust the circumstances around you. Don't trust people. <laughs> you know, People can disappoint you. Don't trust what the newscast is always saying, but keep your mind stayed on him. One of the things I like to do before I go to sleep is I go through promises. I just lay there real still and I start saying these promises. And pretty soon my mind is at peace. I'm asleep. Why? Because I'm trusting in him. And here comes the last one. Are you ready? This is number 12. It says, fear not. Ye, the uh, reproach of men, neither be afraid of their revilings. So this is a special promise for people who have really been put down, maybe falsely accused, maybe rightly accused. Oh, oh, you know, I think sometimes alcoholics and drug addicts, when they come to the Lord and they have all of this mess they've sown, Oh, and the revilings of men. Some way you're going to have to put your trust in God that He can create a new beginning. How many of you out there, dear Lord, you need a new beginning. You need a new beginning. I want you to call. And you don't have to go into detail, but say, this is the day I want you to pray with me for my new beginning. And this is the day we're going to believe together. Don't give up. He's there with you. Emotional issues are so challenging. You can have struggles with depression. You can have struggles with fear, anxiety, frustration, worry. There's all kinds. There's a whole spectrum of emotional issues that challenge us and that we have to deal with. And I want to encourage you today that you do not have to be controlled by your emotions. 
that God can absolutely come and bring peace into your heart, can bring uh, uh, joy where there's been depression, can bring uh, serenity where there's been anxiety. God can absolutely replace all of the negative stuff and replace it with who He is and what He does, the fruit of the Spirit. I want to encourage you, get on the phone right now. Call because we want to pray for you that God will help you with your emotions, not to be controlled by them, but to see His power overcome and also replace, to replace the bad with the good. So get on the phone or get on the website. And I want to encourage you with this. Remember that David always said, why so downcast, O my soul, put your trust in God. And so many times I've said that to myself, Sarah, why are you upset? Why are you discouraged? Why are you nervous? Why are you frustrated? Why are you afraid? And sometimes we get afraid of the future. We get fearful of this situation. We get nervous about this. We worry about what hasn't happened, all kinds of things. But I want to encourage you today that God says to you, why so downcast? Oh, my soul, put your trust in God. And you and I both know that trusting in God is the best solution, the best solution for emotional struggle. So I encourage you today, get on the phone. Let us pray for you. Let us pray for those emotional needs that you have. If you can't get to the phone, then get on the website. We want to pray for you to see God turn what's been a struggle, what's been a difficulty, what's been a hardship, even what's been a failure for you in your emotional life. Turn that into his victory, into his peace, into his joy, into his strength, into his power. So let us pray for you. It's a tremendous privilege and an honor and a transformation for you even today. Emotional suffering can take many forms. Some people battle fear. Other carry the wounds of emotional abuse, grief, rejection, disappointment, betrayal, and even abandonment. But here's the amazing news. Jesus provided for healing and wholeness in our emotions on the cross, just as he provided for our physical healing. You just have to know how to appropriate it. Mom has a teaching that really unpacks this truth in a clear and powerful way. It is called wholehearted and for a limited time, it is our thank you gift to you for your gift of any amount to this ministry. Here's more information on how to share a gift and receive this great resource in your life for healing emotions. Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The chastisement for our peace was upon Him. These powerful words are found in Isaiah 53 and make it clear that Jesus' redeeming healing work on the cross included healing for our emotions. For a limited time, you can receive Marilyn's teaching on healing for your emotions as our special thank you for sharing a gift of any size. It will help you understand how to appropriate healing for your emotions and to walk in wholeness and peace. But if you can share a seed gift of $53 or more in support of the outreaches of Marilyn Hickey Ministries, we want to send you a powerful bundle of resources. We're calling our First Aid Kit for Your Emotions. This kit includes the powerful soft cover book, God's Prescription for a Hurting Heart, the two CD set titled Wholehearted, Keys for Emotional Healing and Prosperity for Your Soul, plus a bottle of anointing oil for your ministering this kind of healing to yourself and to those you love. Sow an Isaiah 53 seed gift right now and receive your own first aid kit for your emotions. Call or click right now. Share online at marilynandsarah.org. Walk in wholeness in your emotions and prosperity in your soul. Call today.